Hey everybody, welcome back in once again. Thanks for joining. Let's get straight to this story about an assistant police chief that's currently been arrested for this. He's been struck by lightning twice on two different occasions and he was incarcerated at exactly 1111. Tell me who made this wish that came true. everybody I don't want to waste too much time talking but I did want to give you a little background information on this assistant chief Norman Wilkerson and a little bit about the place before we get to this conversation with the chief of police assistant chief Norman Wilkerson jr. age 57 started out many years ago as a record driver he acquired the name Storm and Norman after being struck by lightning twice on different occasions he then decided to become a certified peace officer and worked at several departments including the San Jacinto Sheriff's Office and the cut-and-shoot Police Department Cut and Shoot, which is a small community, back in 1975 had a population of 50, which has grown to around 1,500 now, is a 2 7 square mile, was incorporated into a city in 2006. It had a two-man police department, but one is in jail right now, the chief of police and the assistant chief of police, Norman Wilkerson. Wilkerson took over the assistant chief of police job in 2019. Tuesday morning, Texas Rangers and Montgomery County deputies moved into the Cut and Shoot Police Department and arrested assistant chief Norman Wilkerson, Jr. Montgomery County Sheriff's Detectives and Criminal Investigation Special Victims Unit had information that Norman Wilkerson's history was extensive. After it was brought to the investigator's attention, he was given information that a teen under the age of 14 years old was abused back in 1998 and was continued for a long period of time. To verify the claim, detectives dug back old records and found a report from 1998 where Wilkerson had attempted to take his own life at least on two occasions. They also found reports from 2004 where Wilkerson had been abusing a 16-year-old female and a 15-year-old child in 2003. For some reason, the report in 2004 was inactivated by the investigative detective without ever interviewing the 16-year-old and no action was taken by the police. Detectives found that the 15-year-old had been living with Wilkerson for almost five years, and the 16-year-old visited for only three weeks in the early 2000s. During the time, both were abused. The woman, who is now in her 30s, has moved out of state to avoid Wilkerson. She told investigators that Wilkerson would do things when she was four until 10, and then he started forcing her to do worse. When the teen turned 16 years old, Wilkerson forced himself onto her, and when she tried to fight, he put his hand on his revolver and told her she would never be found. She also told investigators when she got home several times, Wilkerson would be playing aggressive videos from his VHS collection. Earlier, hey, how's it going today? Yeah, yeah. Good. Are you uh, a police chief here? Or? Yeah. Cool, sweet. I was uh, just coming through to see if I could ask a couple questions. About what? Um, the recent police chief assistant. Uh, I don't know. I can't say anything. I was advised by for any questions to uh, Montgomery County, because they're the ones conducting the investigation. Okay, I was just, uh, you know, I know that you can't give me any specifics because it's an I don't know any. Because it's an open investigation right now. Um, I had just heard that, you know, uh, he had uh, probably was un investigate under investigation already while he was c working as assistant police chief, so. Not to my knowledge, I had no, I had no knowledge of what was going on. Not to my knowledge. Okay, so you didn't have any idea that anything like that was going on? No. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, public records request. Um, is this where I would have to accomplish that? Uh, no, you have to go to Montgomery County. Well, see, I just got back from Montgomery County, and they told me to do all public records requests regarding this officer. I'd have to come here because... because he was a couldn't shoot off. No, I, I was advised by them as myself, uh, the detective yesterday, to report everything to them. And so there's not uh, an internal affairs? And, uh, no, I'm, I'm a one-man department. Okay. Now it's, I was a two-man, but now one Yeah, I was a two, and, but now one's, one's in jail. Okay, so what I'm saying is, y'all don't do records here? Yeah, I do. I have personal files, but I was advised by T-Clothes not to release those until you have to do a public record. By who? T-Clothes, the uh, Texas Law Commission. Okay, but I, I, I'm wanting to pull information not regarding this case, just regarding this police department. I how do long, that here, right? How, how long has he been here? Uh, Stuff like that. Paper, paper. You know, I'm just wanting to find out. He started, I believe, uh, April the 15th of 2020. 
April 15th, 2020 is when he started here? Yes. Okay. And um, was he working at another department before or anything? Uh, he was working at San Jacinto County. Uh, San Jacinto? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I had heard, um, my resources had told me that he had, he was already under investigation by the uh, Texas uh, Rangers. I, not, I've not been told anything on this. Okay, also I was wanting to see, um, I'm wanting to pull any uh, internal affairs investigations that were pressed on him prior. I know that I can't pull any investigate, uh, any he kind is, of documents. He has not been investigating anything when he's the first time he's been here. Yeah, there's never been any kind of uh, no, no, investigation on him? Any accusation or anything. Okay, and has there any been, y'all wear uh, body activated cameras? Yes. Okay, so I would like to pull any and all um, body activated cameras and dash cameras from when he was an officer here. You're going to have to get that. Uh, y'all have the information here, I can't get it. I just I left have. there and I talked to every person in, in the office. If and you're going to get, get, get something signed by a judge that I can release it to you, I'll release it to you. Well, I mean, it's just public document. I have to be, I have to be right now, I was told not to give anything. Well, I'm not asking for anything on this case. I'm asking for prior. I was advised not to give out anything on this, get on him or anything else. And so I can't pull any public documents, not including without, without without something signed by a judge or uh, through the courts. I can't release anything to it. All right, guys. Well, y'all see, transparency level here is going to be thin. Um, well, I mean, where can I step forward here? I mean, how long have you been chief? Uh, six years. Six years? Okay. Um, this became a township, was it 2009? Uh, that was before my time. All right, cool. And um, so because essentially what's happened is locals have reached out to me. Obviously, the news hasn't really said anything. Um, it's been pretty hush-hush. Um, you know, if this would have been, I think, um, average Joe walking down the road, this I'm would probably be on every news agency, but because it was an officer. It's been on every news agency. Well, I, I didn't hear about it, and I just left a Montgomery County jail and half the people I spoke with there didn't even know that they had an officer, an ex-officer in the jail. They didn't even know. And so it's pretty strange, you know, like I think everybody would have heard about it. It was on, I know for a fact it was on channel 13 in Houston, channel 11, channel two, okay. and channel 26. Okay, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it. And uh, a lot of people hadn't heard about it. So I was just trying to come out here, make face with you, see if you would have a conversation cordial with me, you I, know? I, I have no problem talking to you, but I just, like I said, I've been advised not to so what if I was to want to fully request um, your body cam footage of any interactions that you've had with him? With who? With the officer. Uh, I don't have an interaction with him on my body cam. You don't ever have your camera activated? like no, when I'm talking to him. No. Like, I'm just saying, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, stop, possibly uh, a traffic stop, or any way that I could get any we kind of... You know, we're, I'm just trying to get some B-roll footage of him, maybe at a stop doing something we're like that. We're a small department. We very rarely, if he's out of a traffic stop, I don't go out with him. He doesn't come out with me because we're usually taking care of other things at the time. Okay. So there's... We're not a large department. We're a two-man two department. We don't have all the resources that the large departments have. I understand. So there's nothing you can tell me on him. There's nothing you can tell me. That you, I mean, you already told me you didn't. You didn't ever suspect him personally or anything like that. I, I had no. It surprised me as much as it did him when they showed up. Yeah. To be honest with you. Did you yeah. hire? Him? Yes, sir. And is there any way? I did, I did a background check prior to, <laughs> to hiring him. And so I know that I can't have any information on him. Can I fully request the security uh, camera footage from the day he was arrested? No. Uh, uh, that you got to go through the city attorney because I don't know. And so I can't get any public documents here. Not here, not right now. Wow, wow. Is the mayor here? Y'all have a mayor? She's not here at this time. So, like I say, you need to get in contact with the city attorney, and he can tell you what he can provide for you, what he can. City of Gut and Shoe? Yes. And so I'm guessing after this case is closed, there will probably be a little bit more transparency with the public documents. Well, like I say, it doesn't happen when it's closed. When I know more, I have no problem reaching to you. But yeah. right now, I don't know anything. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we're going to. You won't mind if you come back again and ask you. You can come you back can. anytime. Once, I, once I've been cleared to release information, I will give you anything that I can. Okay. But at this point, I've been advised not to. So I should just con the, your, your best advice would be to contact the city attorney. Um, to get any kind of, because really, like I'm saying, I'm trying to get a little bit of B-roll. Obviously, I'm not going to get any kind of specifics regarding to this case. Well, I'm, I can't give you any because I don't know. Any, you know as much as I do. 
Because, mm -hmm. like I say, everything was a shock to me. Okay. You know as much as I do. I don't really know anything going on right now. And I talked to the detectives once that day and once yesterday, and they're not providing me much information because they said it's an ongoing investigation. Yeah. So at okay. this point, I don't have anything, any information I can give you. So if I wanted to try to get the security camera of him being arrested or anything like that, talk to the city attorney? Yes. Okay. All right, man. Well, we're, uh, I guess I have my conversation. Get the detective's name? No, you, you can call Montgomery County. I'm not going to release that either. They, they can tell you who's in charge. I, I technically don't know who's in charge. They, they, know, they don't want to say nothing. Well, I, I don't know who's in charge. That's why they sent us over here. This is the chief of police, guys. They were just asking. Um, all right, well, I guess I have my conversation. I mean, I... Uh, and I'm not trying... I'm trying to be as transparent as I can be with, with an ongoing investigation. There's not a whole lot I can't release. I was just hoping maybe I could get security camera of him being arrested or something. There's nothing like... That's not going to be... That's not even part of the case. You know, it's just a video of him well, being arrested, and it's public yeah. document. Well, that's fine. Like I say, talk to the city attorney, because I, I, I don't have the authority to release that. Okay, but the records holder does. So Y'all have a records division here? No, it's a small department. All the wire department and two police officers. <laughs> fire department? We stopped that's, by there that's earlier. That's not us. No? That's separate. Oh, all right. So right here is pretty much where it stops. The end of the park, that's the park, the city park right there, and the fire department's over there, and that's, I believe, is actually through Willis now. Okay. Man. All right. Well, it, looks, it seems like there's a lot of stuff coming up around here. I haven't been out here in years. I've been born and raised here in Texas, so um, I got some family not too far. And uh, so it kind of hit home when I heard about this, you know. Uh, you I mean, can look out in the parking lot. You can see our fleet of cars. We had two officers. We had three vehicles. We're a very, very small park. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to walk around, get some pictures, come in, check out the office, and we're going to be on our way. I guess, yeah. I mean, I've pretty much got everything I can. Yeah, and um, like I say, and I, I know how it is with open investigation. I try to pull records all the time, and... Um, for the, for the most part, they'll give me stuff not um, dealing with the case. You know, they'll usually give me, like, if you had any internal affairs before or anything like that. I but you already speak, told me that he I was cannot, never investigated. I cannot speak of any other investigations in any other agencies because I don't know. I cannot speak of any other investigations in any other agencies because I don't know. Yeah. Uh, as up here, he has never been in trouble. Uh, he's never had any formal complaints against him. He seemed like he was a pretty level-headed guy, or what? Very nice guy. Okay. Very, very. He'd help. He'd help you for anything you can help you need. Okay. He's, he's always been a super nice guy. He's it's cr it's crazy, you know, you, when, when you think you know somebody and then you find out that they could be someone else, you know, and yeah. so I mean, and it kind of hit had, home what happened I, here I've because had thirty years in law enforcement, and I've seen and, and I've seen a lot in those years. And I understand that sometimes people aren't who you think they are, but. I still have to be honest and give the man a benefit of that.